Happy to be joined by the co-defensive coordinators here at Rutgers, Jay Neiman, Noah Joseph. Jay, I'll start with you. This defense got significantly better last year, really improved by leaps and bounds. So what's the next step for this group this year? Well, we have to try to make an equal jump to the one that we made between year one and year two. And so it just uh, boils back down to doing all the things that we did, which really was to emphasize our fundamentals, our toughness, our effort, uh, our execution. It's all those things that come together. And, of course, you're going to make a, uh, a jump when you go from one year to the next. And, um, you know, that's just part of the natural progression, I think, of events that, that take place. But now going into year three, we really expect everything to go up a couple more notches, and if we do, we'll, we'll have a good defensive unit ready to play. No, it's clear the secondary is really talented. So how does knowing that you have good depth and good talent back there impact the way that you can strategize and, and game plan? I think the biggest thing it allows us to do is keep guys fresh. Uh, as you guys know, in this league, you can't play every play uh, the whole season. You get worn down, and having some experience and some depth in there, it allow, allows us to rotate guys through. So at the end of games, because we're going to be in a lot of close games, we're, we're fresh and can make some of those one-on-one -on -one plays. A lot of programs have co-coordinators, and um, I guess as it's different at every place. But Jay, explain to us how it works with you and Noah. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, we rely on everybody's input in the room, some more than others, just based on experience and those types of things. And Noah's obviously uh, been some good programs and has a lot of good um, years of experience under his belt. So, you know, when it comes to coaching the secondary and relying on his expertise on the back end, you know, that's that's where the majority of our interaction takes place. And then, um, you know, on the front end, I'm a little bit more tied into that. But it's uh, it's just a, a pleasure to work with a guy who's that knowledgeable and also a guy that. Uh, We've had a long history of knowing each other, like Coach Ash, I coach Coach Joseph, so we go back a ways, too, and uh, it's just great to have a guy in the room that you can trust and depend on. It's such a quality coach. Seems like you're saying you're older than those, those, those two just guys. Barely. Just barely. <laughs> I, I coached him when I was 22. He's a, lot nicer, he's a lot nicer as a coach than he was as a player. Is that That's right? Yeah, I was That's scared to, to death know. of him. That's good to know. Being in Indiana, how did that help being in the conference when, when you came to Rutgers? It's been really good. Just You know the offenses. You know the, the players. You know the skills. Teams, you know the coaches, what they like to do. You know how to practice and prepare and how to rest guys. So it's been huge to just kind of rely on all those and, and understand what's, what's happening on this side of the division. Jay, depth up front, is that <clears throat> going to be maybe one of the bigger challenges? Yeah, we're looking at different combinations of personnel groupings so we can help that. And uh, that, that is front and center on everything that we're looking at sure, um, throughout the course of the training camp. I do think that we're making progress there. Obviously, we're very uh, early in the process here with the training camp. So uh, the, the rest of this week and all next week, by the time we get to the end of next week, we're going to have to have a really good idea of uh, what guys could come contribute in a game situation in that second group of D linemen. No, I'm always curious about defensive coaches that go against the spread every week during the spring yeah. and during camp and then have to adjust to the pro. Now you're in a, in a program where it's more of a pro style. At Indiana, it was more of a spread style. Which is the tougher adjustment? I'll tell you, it's much more difficult in spring practice and fall camp going against our offense in the pro style with all the tight formations and the checks and the things that they're uh, causing you to do. Um, so it will help us as we go on into the season because, as you know, at Indiana, when you face the spread all the time, once you got to a pro-style offense, it was like playing option football. You had to start at ground zero on how to fit up power and things like that. So it's, it's more difficult during practice, but I think in the long run it will help our football team. Jane, even Noah Joseph, thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.